In my video last week, I asked whether parking a truck in the middle of the road constitutes expressive activity under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. In this week's video, I want to address a question that came up last week before the Public Order Emergency Commission, namely, what constitutes a threat to the security of Canada in law? Now, the Emergency Act states that a public order emergency will arise from threats to the security of Canada and that these threats need to be so serious as to constitute a national emergency. Now, this phrase, threat to the security of Canada, is given the same definition under the Emergencies Act as it's given under the Canadian Security Intelligence Service Act. And this definition includes activities within or relating to Canada directed toward or in support of the threat or use of acts of serious violence against persons or property for the purpose of achieving a political, religious, or ideological objective within Canada or foreign state. And the federal government very clearly was paying attention to this definition because we can see that its official justification that was given for invoking the Emergency Act tracks fairly closely with this language. And the federal government stated, quote, the continuing blockades by both persons and motor vehicles that is occurring at various locations throughout Canada and the continuing threats to oppose measures to remove the blockades, including by force, which blockades are being carried on in conjunction with activities that are directed toward or in support of the threat or use of acts of serious violence. Again, we see this concept of serious violence against persons or property, including critical infrastructure for the purpose of achieving a political or ideological objective within Canada. There is a lot to unpack there. So we're going to narrow in and focus specifically on this concept of serious violence and ask what constitutes serious violence in law for the purposes of invoking the Emergencies Act. Now, the challenge, of course, is that there is very little case law that actually interprets this phrase serious violence, particularly since obviously this is the first time that the Emergencies Act has ever been invoked. Now, Professor Ryan Alford, who is a law professor at Lakehead University, who has been granted joint standing before the commission, recently argued in the pages of the National Post that to understand this concept of a threat to the security of Canada, we need to look to the definition of terrorist activity, which is found under the criminal code. And we can see there that the concepts are very much related and we see similar language that is used to discuss both of these concepts. Now, if Professor Alford is right and that we need to look to this definition, then we see that terrorist activity is defined under the criminal code as including acts pursued for the political, religious, or ideological purpose, objective, or cause. So again, very similar language here. Uh, and that these activities are intended to intimidate the public with respect to its security and that intentionally causes one of the following. First, death or serious bodily harm by the use of violence. Second, endangerment of a person's life. Or third, serious risk to the health or safety of the public or any segment of the public. This definition under the criminal code of terrorist activity also includes substantial property damage that arises from any of those acts of violence that I just described, but it doesn't necessarily include advocacy, protest, or dissent, even if those activities cause serious interference with or disrupt essential services, provided that those activities were not carried out with the intention of causing those acts of violence, which we just went over. Now, if this ends up being the definition of serious violence that the Commission adopts in its inquiry, this is going to set a particularly high bar for the government to demonstrate that there was in fact a threat to the security of Canada. Last week in his testimony before the Commission, uh, OPP Superintendent Pat Morris testified that he was skeptical whether the protest constituted a potential threat to national security. So it remains to be seen whether the government is going to be able to make its case before the Commission that there was a threat to the security of Canada that constituted a national emergency justifying the invocation uh, of this extraordinary act. It's also important to remember, however, that the Commission is not a court of law. Uh, the Emergencies Act requires that any time that it's invoked that uh, such a commission be set up to conduct an inquiry into the invocation of the Emergencies Act and that subsequently a report be delivered to Parliament with its findings about whether or not that invocation was justified or required. 
Even if the commission ends up siding with the government, this isn't necessarily going to answer the question of whether the government had legal recourse to the act, because the federal government is being taken to court uh, by several different parties challenging its invocation of the Emergencies Act. And that is really where we are probably going to see particularly rigorous analysis about whether or not there was a threat to the security of, of Canada in law that justified invoking the Emergencies Act.